But they used not to pronounce the ra. Let them mm. good. Like he says, al hara. He they cannot say ra. Okay. So he used to give a whole khutbah without using the letter ra. His whole khutbah. <laughs> Any <laughs> word. To avoid, you know how good he is in Arabic. To, to, tell us. to avoid that. Uh, tell us. Unless if he comes to the Quran, he cannot. But, <laughs> but, but he still recite uh, <laughs> verses that it doesn't have ra in it. <laughs> wow. And uh, look, uh, sometimes, well, alhamdulillah ta'ala, as a human, we are so impressed with certain speakers when they speak, especially about certain things that touches your heart, <coughs> you know. Uh, mashallah, yani, some speakers I've listened here in the state, uh, and all in my life, when you listen to them, mashallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have that charisma of, of, of uh, really hit the nerves in, in your body and your heart, and you observe everything. He talks about it. And this is equality. And I say, well, among all of those, just imagine that somebody was listening to the Prophet ﷺ when he gives a speech. And that is absolutely um, uh, beyond our uh, thinking. That, you know, when the Prophet ﷺ gives the speech and the Sahaba listens to him. And inshallah, Allah will give us the opportunity to do that in Jadeh Gautam. Inshallah, we'll see him in paradise. As you all know that uh, we were still uh, talking about the uh, the compilation of the Quran, how the Quran is being uh, combined in the book that we see these days. And uh, uh, we've talked about the stages of, of doing that during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and also in the time of other Khalifa, the rulers who came after the Prophet Sallallahu And they are, to all of us known, there are four, okay? There are four. Uh, khulafa, the rulers of Khulafa, which is Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman, then Ali ibn Abi Talib. So, uh, and uh, if somebody would give me like uh, a summary of what we talked about last time, just uh, just a summary. Anything? Like uh, one of the major things that we talked about last time. Like I'm back in college. Six pages. <laughs> One of the just the things that we talked about. That the Quran major thing that the, the Quran was what? Oh, we Memorized in where? In the hearts first. Right? Or mm -hmm. in the chest. The Prophet ﷺ memorized it from Jibreel. First Jibreel memorized it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> and then he revealed it to the Prophet. ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, he memorized uh, the Quran and then he Teach it to the Sahaba and Sahaba start to memorize the Quran. That's what we mainly we talked about that. And one of the points that we talked about that the Prophet in the beginning that he prohibited the companions to write any other things than the Quran. Any other saying. And he, he used to ask them to burn it because he does he doesn't want them in the beginning to mix between the Quran and the saying and the action and, and record the actions of the Prophet. Until uh, Dr. Hussein uh, noted to us that at the later time of the Prophet ﷺ, when the Quran is really settled in the hearts of the Muslims, and they start recording that, at that time, the Prophet ﷺ allowed special cases to the special Sahaba to record certain things. And there were like a certain things that was recorded and letters that he used to send to the, to the leaders, the non-Muslim leader invited to Islam. A certain letters that were recorded about the uh, the the the, the, the diya or the zakat uh, money, uh, calculated the zakat money and so on. So those are being uh, recorded and being written in the time of the Prophet You know, but really the hadith uh, was really start putting together. In, you know, in what time? And they, where they start combining and writing and recording the hadith. And making uh, make sure of the authenticity of the hadith. Not in the time of the Umar al Khattab refused to do that. Correct me, uh, Dr. Said, but actually in the time of Umar bin Abdul uh, Abd Aziz, what we see, he to be considered the fifth Khalifa after, uh, after uh, Ali. So, yeah, in the 80 uh, years of Hijrah. 80 years of Hijrah. Okay. So that is what uh, when they start. Uh, they, they start going into deep of writing the sira or the hadith and focusing on the uh, collecting the authentic hadith 
at that time. Anyway, this is not our subject. So this is what happened in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu starts uh, memorizing the, uh, the, the, the verses and he teach it to the Sahaba where the Sahaba start uh, uh, learning that. So these are one of the major things that happened on the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And where, where we could see that the Sahaba st- uh, start to memorize, we knew that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and narration says when they enter the Masjid of the Prophet, the used to Sahaba has uh, uh, groups sitting, different groups sitting and learning the Quran or reciting the Quran. And one time they were kind of loud, you know, when the different groups in the Masjid you come and everybody is reciting at the same time. So they were kind of, you know, uh, loud. So the Prophet Sallallahu asked them to what? To not to do that because they will start mixing. And he start making mistakes when they recite. So he told them to lower their, their voices uh, or their recitation while they were doing that. And also different narration where the Sahaba themselves, they used to recite the Quran in their prayers. In their regular prayers and in the volunteer prayers where they used to pray at night. Most of them. They used to pray at night and recite the Quran. And there were uh, the, uh, uh, narration where the, 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 they say that uh, uh, good numbers of Sahaba were memorizing the Quran, the whole Quran, from the uh, from the first uh, uh, verses that was revealed to the Prophet until the last of the verses. Well, some, of, some of them is Al Khulafa, the four Khalifa. They used to memorize the Quran: Ubay bin Ka'ab, Mu'ad bin Jabal, Abdullah ibn Thabit, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. All of those Sahaba they used to memorize the Quran. Beside all of this, they used to write, and we're going to come about this in uh, a few moments. Also, we mentioned that uh, 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 one of the proofs that in the one of the battles, uh, uh, the 70 Sahabi who memorized the Quran died in that battle. This is on the time of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they died, and that would tell you the big numbers of Sahaba they were memorizing the Quran in Bir Ma'una. Also in the time of al Yamama, it says that this is, we will talk about that battle and how many of the Sahaba were memorizing the Quran uh, in the time of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. So this is the first thing, start memorizing the Quran. The second thing is to write it down, okay, in parchments and in other things that we uh, mentioned. And uh, some of those we used to, uh, the narration says they used to call them Kuttab al-Wahi. Those who writes uh, the the Quran uh, from the revelation that was uh, brought down to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they write, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to call them. When he re- 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 revealed any verses was revealed to him, they used to call them to come over and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell him to write it down. And then after that, uh, uh, Zayd himself he used to say, go ahead and repeat what you have written to me, okay? Um, as as a proof that the Prophet uh, 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 the authenticity of of what is be, what has been written. One time, Al Bukhari mentioned that Abdullah bin Mas'ud, one of those who writes the Quran and memorizes the Quran, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one time asked him to read the Quran for him. Say, I like to listen from you. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud says, Oh Prophet of Allah, you want to listen the Quran from me, and the Quran was revealed to you. يعني, يعني definitely I'm the one who's supposed to listen to you, not you. You know, يعني, that means, how could I do that? But the Prophet he says, I love to hear the Quran from others. Okay, I love to read the Quran. From, that means, we, we, when we recite the Quran, let's recite it in a, a beautiful uh, recitation. Uh, and then he started re- uh, reading until he to get to one of the chapters called al Nisa, the woman. And he get to the verse where he says, Wajitna fakaifa ila jitna bik min kulli ummatin bi shahid. He says, until the time where all the nations in the day of judgment they will come with their witness, the prophets. And then we they will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, and then we will bring you as a witness to your ummah. Wow. Okay? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Haswak and he says, Stop. And he, Abdullah Mas'ud looked at the eyes of the Prophet Sallallahu and he was in tears. Because of that responsibility was put upon him and to be brought in the day of judgment as a witness upon his ummah. 
So this is, you could tell that Abdullah Mas'ud, he recited from what he memorized. Also says that Zayd bin Thabit, one of those uh, major ones, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used always to call him and to write the, the Quran. He is, Zayd used to say, I used to write the revelation of the Prophet for the Prophets, and he would dictate it to me. When he finished, he would command me to read it back. So he would command me to read it back. So I used to recite that to him, what I have written. What I have written. So they, this is a big proof that the Quran was written on the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Also Ibn Abbas narrated that the Prophet ﷺ, whenever there is any revelation, any verses of the Quran was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet used to tell them to go ahead and put this verse in this surah in that place. As Jibreel told the Prophet ﷺ to do so. So he used to tell them because see, we, we say that the Quran did not come at once. In, it came in parts within 23 years. So within like a in uh, um, um, tenth year, whatever, a certain verses came. So he said, put that verse in Surah Al-Nisa, in the verse number this, after this verse, before that verse. Exactly where they tell him to, to place it. And this is what Zayd bin Thabit used, used to do. Um, and they, we, we, the, the, that they used to write it down, we wouldn't have any printed company like what we have these days. They don't have nice pens like these and nice papers that we see right now. So they, the Sahaba used to write it down in different things, like the leaves, the, 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 the dead palm leaves, you know, they are big. So they write, they used to write on them, uh, shoulders of an animal with a big bone. They used to write those uh, on those things. So they are really different things where they used to write the Quran uh, on them. And some of the Sahaba, they used to keep some of those, you know, or they copy and they keep some of those copies with them at their home, okay? Like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud or Zayd bin Thabit, Rubai, others, they used to keep those things and others they used to be kept at the, at the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The narration says, the ulama differ how many ones, what they call them, the, the scribes, those who wrote the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam everything, they, some of them they say 24, some of them they say 42, some of them they say 52, some of them they say maybe up to 60. Those who use uh, uh, the uh, revelation of the Quran. And among them, Aisha wa Hafsa. Among them, Aisha wa Hafsa. Even though the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Khudu Quran, take the Quran from four. They know who Aisha is. Aisha, the wife of the Prophet. Can I say it? Hafsa is who? Who's Hafsa? Who tell me? Not the first person. Who's Hafsa? Sisters. Hafsa. Oh my God. Who's Aisha? The wife, right? Khadija. The wife. Hafsa is also the wife. And who's her father? Who's, who's, who's the father of Aisha? Abu Bakr, the first Khalifa. Who's the, 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 the father of Hafsa? Sounded like you were saying Aisha Hafsa like it was one person. No, Aisha they, they is one person, they, they were and Hafsa is very another person. Here. But they are very close. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna give you a hint. Aisha, her father was Abu Bakr. Hafsa, her father was the second one, Umar, Umar ibn al Khattab. Okay. Yes. The first two were fathers-in-law of the Prophet Father. And the second two were sons-in-law of the Prophet <laughs> So they used to write, they, they were among... So Uthman so married the two daughters of the Prophet And Ali married, of course... I never thought about the two fathers-in-law and the two sons-in-law. I never put it together like that. I knew that, but I didn't think about it that way. You know it separately, but you never... But all the Khulafa were related to the Prophet All of them. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu prohibited Sahaba to take those parchments outside the Medina when they go to fight or anything because of the may the enemies will disrespect the uh, the Quran. So the Prophet ﷺ did not compile. This is very important. Yes, sister. Do any of those still exist? Those bones and Oh, that's good. Well, I'm going to talk about that later. Okay. I mean, you know they're around. Yes. So uh, the Prophet ﷺ did not compile the Quran in one book. Okay, as we see these days. 
okay, during his time, lifetime, to make sure that the Quran was written down, but he was making sure that the Quran was written down totally in his time, in totality in his time, okay? But did not compile it in the book, was written. The Sahaba had written the whole Quran in his time, but would not, as we see, compile it in one book, and he kept it in his house, and he says, this is the Quran that we see right now, it was, okay? But it was written during his time. It was written okay? properly, just not combined in one exactly. And reviewed by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everything. So why? Because the Quran was not in danger because the Prophet is still alive at that time. That's number one. Number two, because the Quran used to come, uh, uh, the, the revelation used to continually come to the Prophet Sallallahu within 23 years. So how are you going to put something in a book and then another revelation comes in, uh, in, in one year and another in a few months, or maybe two more. How are you going to go ahead and do that? So revelation will start coming, coming, coming. And the Prophet asked the Sahaba to write it down and recorded it, and he asked him where to put it. it with this, this verse comes in that. So the Sahaba writes the Quran in that order. And where everybody was written, writing something, and they some of them they were kept with their, at their homes. Okay? So uh, and until the last verses came to the Prophet وسلم, before his death, how many days? Nine days. That was the last verses revealed to the Prophet. وسلم. And the other thing that the arrangement of the verses. And surah was not in order yet, okay? And when they were revealed. So they were not in order, they come in different ways. So in summary, when the Prophet ﷺ passed away, the entire Quran has been memorized by many of the companions, okay? In by many. Order. Yes, the way that we see the Quran, we recite the Quran right now. From start with chapter Al-Fatiha, end with chapter Al-Nas. Yes. And existed in written form, but it had not been compiled between the two covers as we see right now. It's not put as Quran between two covers, okay? It was scattered in loose, all right, between the Sahaba and fragments that were owned by different Sahaba. Some companions also had substantial yet incomplete copies of the Quran. They have big numbers, like Abdullah Mas'ud, he has probably a hundred and and six chapters, okay? And some others, they have 60 chapters. Some of them, they have so many chapters, but they were written in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, the second stage. The second stage where it came in the time of the first Khalifa. This first ruler was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Remember this, okay? This is the second stage. Uh, this is why, because when the Islam uh, starts spreading out, and and the and some of the uh, Muslims at that time accepted and tribes accepted Islam for political reason. This is through the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, okay, some of them start rejecting that belief, Islam, and some of them refused to be zakat, okay, which is one of the pillars of Islam, okay, because this is end by the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they, and some of them start calling himself, uh, they, they, some of them they, uh, came and claimed to be a prophet after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. False prophets. Any name that comes to your mind? Anybody read? His name is? There was a woman, I don't, I can't think of her. There's another woman, yes. Musaylam mm -hmm. al -Kadhaf. Musaylama al kadhab He tried to be, yeah, he tried to be, to claim to be, and his tribe, subhanAllah, they gather around him. Okay, they don't believe, the, but because of they have this uh, uh, tribalism, so they start following him. Big numbers. So Abu Bakr Sadiq decided to fight them. So when, with all the Sahaba, they went to jihad to fight them, 70 of those who used to memorize the Quran died. They were, the Quran, they were brave to fight, okay? Because they do exactly what the Quran is telling them to do. So, subhanAllah, they, 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 they take murders in there. Umar ibn Khattab has a big concern. Umar ibn Khattab has a big concern about that. He went to Abu Bakr Siddiq. He says, oh, Abu Bakr, you know the news that came and uh, the, uh, that the, uh, uh, the, those Sahaba has died on this battle. 
70 of them. So he's telling him that why not we combine what is being written on the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, you know what's his answer? He refused. He says, how could I do something that the Prophet Sallallahu did not do? How could? Because they were afraid from uh, innovation in Islam, something new related to religion that the Prophet Sallallahu did not do. Okay? So he was, he was afraid of this. So Umar insisted. And he says, this is something good that we need to do. And Abu Bakr refused in the beginning. And until Umar continued to argue with Abu Bakr Siddiq, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened his heart to that. And he felt good about it. He says, yeah, we could do that. So they called whom? One of those who used to write uh, the, the Quran in the time of the Prophet he was very righteous and uh, has a great ability of, of, of uh, uh, writing the Quran, memorize the Quran, uh, Zayd bin Thabit. Okay? Zayd bin Thabit came to Abu Bakr and Umar and they told him about this. And he was, you know, they told him, You are a young, good man, righteous man. The Prophet used to, um, uh, uh, used to ask you, that's a special to ask you to write the Qur'an in his time. Okay, that is a status. That's something, you know, very special. That somebody, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, somebody to do that. So they ask him to go ahead and compile the Qur'an and call, collect all those pieces or uh, parchments from everywhere to bring them and put them in a Qur'an. They compile them, put them together. Definitely he refused in the beginning, like Abu Bakr Siddiq, Okay, and he told them that if you would ask me, Abu Bakr and Umar, to remove a mountain, would be much easier for me than that what you're asking me right now. How responsibility is that? You are telling me to compile the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is huge responsibility. Say, Wallah, it's easy for me. If you tell me this is a mountain, remove it from this place and put it in there. It would be much easier for me. But later on, he said, and he accepted to do that. Okay. Um, so, when he did this, Zayd was trust, entrusted by the Prophet He was entrusted by the Sahaba and the companions. No one could say anything about Zayd in his manners, in his character, everything is great about Zayd. He didn't lie. What? He wasn't a liar. No, he was not a liar, definitely. He was okay. the closest to Prophet Muhammad Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he used to write the, the yes, he used from, to write Everything that the Prophet ﷺ used to send out to the Prophet. And he used to be one of those, the primary uh, uh, scribes who memorized the Quran also, by heart. Also, so they called every, upon every Sahaba to come over and do this. So the old Sahaba who has any pieces, uh, that is anything that is being written in the Quran, any of the scribes, or the scribes, bring it to to say it in the message. So the Sahaba, they said, he says, and when you bring it, you have to bring two witnesses with you. Okay, see how accurate they are. Bring two witnesses with you, they witness that what you have written is correct. The ulama, this differs in this, what this means. Some of them, they say, meant that they will witness what he is being written is correct, authentic. Some of them, they say what is being written, that he, they witnessed that he wrote this in, while, uh, in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu In the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu So they would witness, yes, that was correct. So then everybody started bringing, and the third thing that they used to depend on their what? Memorization. And we say the, the chain of narration is by groups. So a lot of Sahaba memorized the Quran, so when they, somebody bring something that is different, definitely there are other big numbers of group of Sahaba memorize the Quran, say, so no, this is incorrect. So they start correcting that with the witnesses, with their memorization of the Quran, they start bringing all those uh, uh, scribes to, to Zayd bin Thabit. It took some time. I think it took like about two years maybe or something, a good number of uh, the, uh, like a period, a longer period. Well, after Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, but it was actually in the time of Abu Bakr. This talks about started with Abu Bakr. His uh, his khilafah was about two. 
because it was two years. Only. Two years, Sorry. and that's what has happened in the time of Abu Bakr. Two years. Two years. Clarify two what years you're saying. is his Khilafah. Khilafah. Of Abu Bakr. But and, it was and maybe that, um, and part of it was that war that happened. So, so but I they think, finished in the time of Omar. Well, it's actually, but I, I was read that and to make sure that we, why? Because it was skipped. The narration says that was skipped in the house of Abu Bakr Siddiq when he was Kuba. So all of them, all those cards were kept in the in the in the uh, house of Abu Bakr when they were killed. So you okay. saying it was completed? Completed on the time of, of the before his death. Yes. Okay. Okay. So they were all kept in in, in his in his home until uh, uh, Zaid. He says, "I've." Uh, um, uh, he was, you know, when everybody started bringing these scribes, until he found one scribe that was written, and the only one who was wrote this, uh, a sahabi named Abu Khazim al Ansari, he brought the, this is the end of Surah At Tawbah. But it was it was him, only one him, that he wrote it, and and and, and from the Prophet sallallahu and it was authentic. And then Abu Bakr says, name it. What do you want to name this? And they all agree that we let's name it Al Mushaf. Okay, so they name it Al Mushaf. Okay. Uh, then, then after that, Umar ibn Khattab. So those scribes were transferred to the house of Umar ibn Khattab, and then it was transferred to the daughter of Umar ibn Khattab. Her name is Hafsa, which is the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay. Um, but this is not, just remember this, very important, was not the official copy of the Quran to the whole Ummah that should follow. So it just only compiled the Quran on the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But Abu Bakr did not make it the only official Correct. copy of the Quran. It, it is not at the time of Abu only Bakr. Abu Bakr. It is not the only official that the Ummah should follow. We will know why later on. So Umar al Khattab died the time of Uthman ibn Affan, the third Khalifa. Okay? And the, definitely the territories of the Muslims were expanded because of jihad. Five folds than what used to be on the time of Abu Bakr and Umar. Expanded. They, they reach Russia, Azerbaijan and Armenia and all those countries. Yeah, yeah, at that time. time. Pakistan, 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 everything Tatar. So whatever that does. Understand. 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 Uh, the, you know, the, look, you have to understand something. See, the Zahaba learned from the Prophet Sallallahu Okay? How the, the Zakallah Khair Dr. So the Zahaba learned from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the recitation. Okay? And those Sahaba, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, used to ask them to go and teach others the Quran. So they have learned it from different Sahaba. So when those armies, big armies from the east, from uh, Iraq to Syria, okay, Asham, when they were all going to into those um, uh, jihad, into you know, uh, those territories, those countries, and they meet other, you know, somebody accepted Islam. So when they start teaching them, every Sahaba they were teaching them the way that he learned it from the Prophet Sallallahu right? And the Quran was revealed with a mode of expression in the beginning, which is what I meant, in seven letters. In seven letters. That means, like for example, I'm an Arab, right? You guys laugh at my accent, right? And we sometimes in America, we have different south accents from the north and south, and they laugh at us at the south, y'all. So they, <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what you said. So they laugh at us. Yeah. 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 So we have we have a different way of saying things. Say you know, because say say and especially and I get it. And especially if we are old, it is not easy for you to pronounce things correctly, right? Everybody is not laughing at my accent. I laugh at their accents again because I tell them difficult difficult. Uh, Arabic terms, 
they can say it in their language, and it's very difficult. Khoraga. Anybody can say that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ashraf Shara Shar Shafin, Sharif Shara Shar Shafin. Anybody could say that? Sharif Shar Shafin. Sharif Shar Shafin. So the mercy of this message, the mercy of the man, and the Arab at that time of the Prophet, they were different. They were different, they were different in, even though in their pronunciation. For example, look. Uh, some of the Arab at the time of the Prophet they cannot pronounce Qaf, the letter Qaf, and the tongue. So they used to do Ja. So they say Al 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 Qush Al Qush Al Quran Al Al Qa Al Quran. Okay. In the time of the Prophet okay. Okay. Oh, okay. For example, they used to As Sirat, As Sad, As Sad, Letter you know, the ones we all have difficulty pronouncing, those were the letters that exactly. were difficult. And some of the Arab, they cannot say asa, they say asa, asira. Okay? Yes. In that thing. So, so those were kind of like difficult to pronounce. The Prophet ﷺ asked Jibreel to, if he could say it in a different letters. And the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in different letters. Okay? And was allowed for them to say it and pronounce it in that letter, in seven letters. So, the Sahaba who learned it from the Prophet ﷺ, why I'm saying this? Because one time, uh, uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab was, in the time of the Prophet, was, he was, a, he, one of these companions, his name is Hisham, was, three minutes, Hisham, <laughs> I'm trying to finish this, so I can read you, Hello, so without seeing you. Anybody who would like to attend the tafsir with the imam, I, I want to give that opportunity. Anyone who would who wants to continue to remain for any other purpose, we can do that. But I really would like to give the opportunity to. So Hisham was the leader of the prayer. Omar So Hisham was reciting the Quran in letters that was not known to Umar. In letters that was not known to Umar. So Umar. Who was he was saying the right thing? I almost grabbed him in the prayer. <laughs> what is oh. praying? But he waited until he finished and he grabbed him from his, from his, uh, what do you call this? Collar. Collar of his neck. Collar of his neck. Okay. And he says, That's what I was saying. and ask him about what he is reciting. He says, This is the way I have learned it from the Prophet. So he took him to the Prophet. Omar cannot just say, Oh, he's alright, correct? No, he want to go verify it. So he took him to the Prophet. Grabbed him. Come with me. So he took him to the Prophet. The Prophet he says, Hisham, read, recite. So Hisham recite. He says, This is the way he was revealed. Umar, read. He was reading Surah Al Furqan. Umar, recite. So he recited Surah Al Furqan. He said, This is the way it was revealed. Okay? So subhanAllah, it came in different uh, accent. Okay? A mode pronunciation, of expression pronunciation. or pronunciation to them because at that time they were old and it was very hard for them to pronounce the letters correctly so the Prophet said do not recite the Quran he says yeah go ahead it was recite also in the way that you guys could recite it or could pronounce it okay that's you know, why I it wish came I to had known this different. so many years ago because every time I was reciting Quran haram wrong you know, but, but I was wrong. Gonna do that. Okay, okay, I know, but, <laughs> but it at least gives you the ability to not feel like you're inadequate because you can't pronounce the words correctly, you know, that, and this tells, it just gives you a sense of understanding that everybody, even at the time of the Prophet Muhammad who were fluent in Arabic, were having difficulty with certain letters as well. So at least we don't feel just completely like I'm um, never going to say certain things. My last name is Caleb, but I said Caleb, and the Arabic ladies would go, what are you talking about? There's no such name as Caleb. And then finally I realized I'd go, Caleb. But my husband never corrected me. Yeah. So, you have a hairball. Now, everybody's trying to put the blame on the husbands. 
<laughs> well, no, no, honey. We, we haven't even have begun yet. compensation for that. Yeah, we haven't so. even begun that part yet. I called a sad Isan for an entire year, Ahmed. I'm like, okay, yeah. and he never corrected me, okay? I called my son horse for a year. <laughs> or it sounded like I was calling horse, and my husband doesn't want to correct my Arabic. So he's just, he's, I think he's afraid I'll come back at him and give him a hard time. So. Probably he needs himself a correction. He just, he, just, he just wants to stay, he just wants to stay married, so he just lets me say hi over all the time. So uh, we'll stop it over here, even though I was planning to finish uh, that, because no, you have to attend see, the class. See, that's what you tell me. Should I just leave it very short and no, come not back explain next week. things? But do you guys want to go? To, no, no, we'll continue next week. Yeah. But I'm saying I'll stop over here because this is the most sensitive. No, she thought you're saying finish. No, no, no. no. The series. Finish us. Okay. So this is the most important. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, discussion about how the Quran is really compiled. And especially on the time of Uthman, that's where everybody is talking about what happened in the time of Uthman ibn Affad of Allah. So inshallah ta'ala will continue that. Uh, uh,